What's going on? How y'all doing? Uh, my video today is going to be about Stevie Wonder leaving Motown Rockets. And there have been different people with different opinions about it. Um, you know, it's kind of like it'd be your parents or your grandparents or an uncle or cousin, somebody that was in your family or even to be a good friend or a guy parent or something. And they were with somebody for like ever, you know, like it's like you expect that. Um, him with the Motown label logo. I I'll say it like this. If you have a particular era in time, it's a big news for you. But if you're from another time and place, it's like, what's the fuss? Ironically, one of his songs too, by the way, in the name of his broker implant were for public records. But it's kind of like people do it all the time. Um, my thing is this. Does he own his masters? Does he have a say-so of his songs, his publishing? I mean, you know, that's the most important thing. And um, he stayed loyal in Detroit to the label. But Barry Gordy sold Motown off back in 1988 to Potty Graham Records. So technically, Motown has just been an imprint and a name. It hasn't been the real Motown. And we're talking... Um, almost 40 years, you know, that's, I mean, when you think about it, that's, you know, it's 30, let me get in like 32 years or so like that. So it's not like, it's not the same, um, you know, but I understand him being loyal. Stevie Wonder to me is one of the last of musical ambassadors treasures. Okay. Period. He's in my high, high enchalant greatest artist ever. The man did it all conquered incredible humanitarian responsible for dr king's holiday so and a lot of other things he's done true musical ambassador one of the few artists that i would definitely say the genius label and that gets thrown around way too much but that guy represents you know a wonder of the world a wonder of the universe incredible him leaving motown he said he's still going to put a gospel album dedicated to his mother who passed in 2013 on there, but he still come back. It's not, it's big deal for old school heads or people who used to buy records and look for the logo and the imprint. However, my thing is, I will say this. He was there for 60 years, but I will say this. Does he own his masters? Does he have a right to his music? Because that's the most important thing. You know, I mean, I used to like the loyalty to see an artist with a label, and I thought that was woo-woo-woo. But I remember back in the 80s, late mid to late 80s, Miles Davis was with CBS Records for like 35 years or so. And he didn't really leave in the best of terms because of the money and having a say about your records. So to me, that's all that really matters now. Does he, have, does he own his masters if he leaves Motown? He won't leave the city of Detroit because he's embodied that and he's embraced. And that's he's always part of that. And the Detroit folks knows my eyes don't cry. The stepping song, everybody in the D know. So he's, he's in, enriched and engraved there. However, the big question is after six years, does he ever sell on his works? Which to me is the most important thing. And his vault and access and his family and et cetera, et cetera. You know, when you think about it, it's the most important thing for his legacy to own it. So does he have that? I don't have a problem with artists leaving labels because there is a lot of politics. And it goes back to what I'm saying, you know, and they're putting them out on these different social media channels and all this. Listen, if you are coming along today, yeah, you know Drake is with uh, Young Money, Cash Money, a subsidiary of Universal. But you don't really even care about the label because he, because of the stream game. It's not like we're in the day and time when you bought got an album from an artist and you sitting there reading all the credits and this thing and that thing. That's an old school thing. I'm just being real. Our people today ain't even tripping on that. You know, unless they diehard fans. They see, but they do hear the rumblings of how artists leave a label. They hear how artists 
it's a plantation and artists don't get paid properly and don't have their say. So my take it is this. If he's got his masters and he's got the rights to his songs, that's the only thing that really matters. Yeah, I love the Motown logo, but I'm going I'm being real about this. When Barry Gordy sold Motown, and all due respect to the late Gerald Busby and others who ran it, it wasn't the same. I'm sorry, Barry Gordy ain't behind the desk with it. It ain't the same. If you don't have Smokey Robinson in with it, it's not the same. And Donna Ross and you had all the other parties involved, it's not the same. You know, it's so sad because it was a black owned label. But once Barry Gordy, and it was undersold because they turned around and sold it again to Universal and it was sold for like three times of what Gordy got. That is a crime and a travesty. Because the most important black label ever to me and the most important music man ever to me with Barry Gordon. They ain't got the depth like they should, you know. So, But anyway, that's my thoughts. It takes about Steve Wonder leaving Motown. My thing is, as long as he owns his masters, I ain't got no problem with it. And of course, I, I can get, of course, I'm more into his older material because I still think his 70s run is the greatest run of albums ever by R&B pop artists. That's my take. You know, give me your thoughts and takes about it. She wanted to leave a Motown. And my thing is just on your masters. Hit the like, subscribe, and the bell rings new video. I welcome feedback on this. See, Dara, she wanted to fan. Let's talk. Let's chop it up. Wash your hands. Keep your mind clear. Watch out for another. And thank, we thankful that we still have him. Give him his flowers because he's still speaking words of wisdom, emotions, and feelings. And you know a Stevie song. I'm out.